Hello everyone, ah, it's finally here. This is the RetroBreeze guide to modding the Elder Scrolls 3 Morrowind on your Android device. I've been working on this video for a while because I just wasn't sure how to make this process simple and unconvoluted. There was also the issue of finding a good selection of mods that wouldn't slow the game to a crawl on a less powerful device, like the Retroid Pocket 2 Plus, which is what I use for this video. In the end, I decided to make a video showing you the actual process to install a minimal number of mods, but also including the amazing Tamriel Rebuilt mod, which adds a crazy amount of content to the game, including a gigantic new landmass, the Morrowind Province's mainland. I have not detailed any specific collection of mods in this video, however after following this video you will understand the method of installing mods, which you can apply to any collection of your choice. I have also opted not to use a mod manager for this particular video because when it comes to Open Microwave, it just made things more complicated and the app takes care of everything important for us anyway. For more information on modding Morrowind in general, not just the mobile port, I've linked to an incredibly detailed video from Tech Syndicate in the description. It's really fascinating stuff if you want to learn a lot about how all this stuff works. Alright, to begin with, I'm going to show you how to install and activate a single mod in the Open Microwave app. By doing this you'll gain an understanding of how the process actually works. After that we'll look at installing a larger mod, Tamriel Rebuilt, and how to load it properly and avoid conflicts. As a prerequisite to this guide, you'll want to make a free account on Nexus Mods, as well as following the steps for installing installing Open Microwave and Morrowind on your device, like I showed in my previous video. I'll link that video in the corner and in the description box below. You must follow that video in its entirety before starting this one, as I will not be repeating the installation process of the game here. And with that, let's get started. There are essentially three types of mods for Morrowind. Assets. These are folders with things like textures and meshes. Most mods will contain assets, and some will only be asset folders. For this type of mod, you only need to copy the folder to install it. No further action is required. Plugins. These mods contain .esp and or .esm files, which are Elder Scrolls plugin or Elder Scrolls master files respectively. I'm not going to go into what these files are in this video, but there's a useful link in the description if you want to learn more. For our purposes, these files are the same thing. And resources. Resource packs are .bsa files, which are simply archived files that Morrowind will unpack by itself. These are typically only used for very big mods like Tamriel Rebuild. To begin with, let's install a plugin mod. First, we're going to browse to modding-openmw.com. This website is a fantastic resource for finding open Morrowind compatible mods and collections. If a mod is on the site, it should work with the mobile version too. For now, scroll down a bit and click iHeartVanilla under lists. This will bring you to a big list of mods that are in the collection known as iHeartVanilla. For now, click on Patch for Purists. This page will give you a lot of information about your mod. Of particular note is the Usage Notes section, which might have useful information on how to use the mod. We can see here that the Patch for Purists mod has three plugins. Anyway, scroll to the top and click Download page, which will take you to Nexus Mods. You'll want to click on Files, then under Latest Version, click Manual Download. This will download a zip file containing the mod. Create a folder somewhere like your desktop named Data Files, and extract the content of the zip file into that folder. Let's take a look here. The folder structure in a mod will typically match the same folder structure as your Morrowind installation. Here's a look at the mod folder on the left and the game folder on the right. You can see we have the same folders. Book art, icons, meshes, textures. Now the docs folder is part of the documentation for the mod, so we don't really care about it. It's usually just text files, I'm just gonna leave it here, but you could delete it too. It's not a part of the mod is what I'm saying. We also have some ESP and ESM files in here, which are the plugins. Let's install and activate this mod onto our device. Certain mods can have a huge number of files which can take forever to copy directly. You'll want to compress it first. Right click our data files folder, highlight 7-zip and click add to datafiles.7z. When it completes, you'll have an archive which you can then copy to your device. Connect your device to the PC, enable file transfer and copy it over. Make sure you copy it to the same storage that you have your Morrowind files on. In this case, it's my Retroid Pocket 2 Plus's internal storage. It should only take a second at this point, but when you have a lot of mods and your data files archive is bigger, be prepared to wait a while. Once it's complete, open Z Archiver on your device, then browse to the file and tap on it. Tap Extract, then find your Morrowind folder and extract it directly into here, replacing the existing files when prompted. I've just checked Apply to All Files, then tapped Replace. You might need to do this a couple of times. When that's done, close the Archiver and open your Open Microwave app. If your mod contained only asset folders, you can just launch right into the game and no further action is needed. But since our mod contained plugins, we need to tap on Mods. Scroll down the list and you should see our plugins. Now, the order of this list is pretty important. It determines in which order your plugins are loaded. This is a topic for later, but for now any checked mods will be loaded in the order they appear in the list, whilst any unchecked mods are ignored. Tap on the left side icon and pull the patch for purists.esm mod up, and drop it underneath the 
Blood Moon entry, then check its box. By the way, Morrowind.esm, Tribunal.esm, and Bloodmoon.esm are the base game and its expansion packs, so just leave those enabled. Anyway, drag the semi-purist fixes under the previous one and check it, and finally do the same with the book typos plugin. And that's it, you've just installed your first mod. Now go back and tap the play button to launch the game. Uh, actually, it's kind of hard to tell that you've got this one activated because this mod isn't very visual. Let's add an asset only mod that will make a notable difference. Close the Open Microwave app. Browse back to the iHeart Vanilla list and find true type fonts for OpenMW. Open its download page and download the first file, Fonts, and the HD Texture Buttons English file. Inside the first archive is a fonts folder which I'll extract. Inside the second folder is a high-res UI folder, inside which is a textures folder which I'll extract as well. Since I already have the Retroid attached to my PC at this point, and these are relatively small files, I'm just going to copy them directly instead of zipping them first. Open your device's storage, then the Morrowind folder, then the Data Files folder, and then just drop the Fonts and Textures folder into there, replacing and merging when prompted. Even though the Textures folder here is only about 54 megabytes, it still takes quite a while to copy just because of the number of files. This is why I typically will zip files first and then extract them on the device, which is much quicker. With a handful of mods, you could be waiting hours or even a day or two if you don't compress and copy them first. Once it's done, you can just launch the game again and you'll see some lovely crisp fonts and buttons, which is itself a huge improvement to the game. Actually, this is an utterly essential mod for Morrowind. Notice we didn't have to enable any plugins either because there are no plugin files needed for this mod. It was just an assets mod. So you've learned how to find and download a mod, copy it to the device in a couple of different ways, and how to order and activate your mods. From here, I suggest playing around and trying to install some mods of your own to get a feel for the process. In this guide, I'm going to install one more mod, the Amazing Tamriel Rebuilt, which adds a stupid amount of new content and land to explore. On modding-openmw.com, search for Tamriel, then find Tamriel Data and Tamriel Rebuilt, and open both of those pages. First, we'll look at Tamriel Data, which is essentially data files that make the Tamriel Rebuilt mod work. It contains everything such as textures, sounds, and more. Note that this file says requires BSA and has plugins. We already know how to use plugins, so we'll learn how to load BSA, or resource files, too. Go to the download page, then click Download for Morrowind Nexus Tamriel Data. Under Files, we're going to download Tamriel Data Vanilla, which is better for low-end systems. Click Manual Download to start it. While that's going, go to the Tamriel Rebuilt page, then the Download page, then use the Morrowind Nexus link to go to the Nexus page. Note you can use other links if you prefer. I just use Nexus here for consistency. Click Files, then download Tamriel Rebuilt and the 21.01 hotfix. Alright, we have those three downloads done, so let's open the Tamriel Data Vanilla archive first. Before that, I'm deleting the old data files folder and creating a new one just for convenience. Open the archive, then the 00 core folder. Copy out everything except the docs folder into your data files folder. Now open the Tamriel rebuilt archive. Open 00 core, then drag out textures and the ESM file. Open the 01 faction integration and extract the TR factions file. Then repeat this process for all the folders and ESM files, except for a bot's travels since we're not going to use that mod. Finally, open the hotfix archive, then the 00 core folder, then extract the contents to your data files folder. Then do the same with 01 factions. Overwrite the previous TR factions file too. Archive the new data files folder like we did before. Copy it over to your device, then extract the archive into the Morrowind folder using the Z Archiver app. Don't forget to merge and replace when prompted. When that's done, open the Open Microwave app, tap Mods, and order your plugins like this, starting below the patch for purists plugins we installed before. First, Tamriel Data, then TR Mainland, then TR Mainland Hotfix, then TR Factions, then TR Preview, and finally, TR Travels Preview and Mainland. Then, check all of those checkboxes. Now we need to enable the resource files for Tamriel Rebuilt. These are those BSA files from before. Simply tap Resources, then move the PT underscore data under Blood Moon, then TR data under that and enable both. And now, just launch the game. On the loading screen, you'll see that Tamriel Rebuilt is being loaded in, and you've successfully installed the mod. The quickest way in-game to check that Tamriel Rebuilt is active is to open the world map. You can see here that it is just massive, because we can see the Morrowind mainland as well as the base game map. To reach the Tamriel Rebuilt content, you can find Sentius Verus in the starting town of Sedanin and pay him to take you to Ebonheart. Once there, turn around and cross the docks to find Nevosi Halan, that's probably not how you say it, who will take you to Old Ebonheart, which is a part of Tamriel Rebuilt. If there's an easier way, feel free to let me know in the comments. Alright, and I'm about to wrap this video up. I have a great tip for you before I go though, which will help you, especially if you've not modded Morrowind before. On modding-openmw.com, click all lists to find a few collections of mods. Now you can click a list, and this list is the exact order that you want to load your mods. So you can go down this list one by one, install, order, and activate each mod in the open 
microwave app, then move on to the next one. It can take some time due to the sheer number of mods available, but these lists are really helpful for ensuring your mods don't conflict with one another. You could also install all the mods at once, then order them all afterwards. It's up to you how you want to do it, but I prefer the first method. The main takeaway here is to remember to copy your mods into the data files folder, then order and check them in the open microwave app. And that's it! Thanks very much for your patience on this video. I know a lot of viewers of my previous video were waiting on it. I hope you find it helpful, and let me know in the comments below if you had any trouble with the process. Also, let me know which mods you test and how they worked out. If you like this video, please consider subscribing, and let me know if you want to see more content like this in the future. Thanks very much for watching Retro Breeze, and I will see you next time.